Madarazi Sempi and Devi, who embodied Shiva Bhakti herself, continued. The army of the twin Mandals was scattered but the reigning Devar was killed in the battle. Your great-grandfather Aranjaya Thaval was also injured in that battle. But no details about him were known then. Sundara Kalar, the eldest son of Aranjaya Deva, the son of a child, had gone to the war in Elam. There is no news about him either. Born in a royal family, your father was the one who was next to Parintaka Emperor in Tanjore Palace at that time. But your father used to devote his heart to Lord Shiva in his youth, hating the affairs of the kingdom. He does not like war. He regretted that the people were fighting and dying because of the greed of the kings. He argued with his father and brothers about it. He spent his time in the company of sages, pilgrims to holy places and temple worship. He does not want to touch weapons like swords and veals with his hands. He was not trained in war tactics and methods of warfare. He believed that kingship was full of sins such as lying and fabricating, deceit, disguises, intrigues and re-intrigues, and murder. What is the difference between a thief stealing other people's property and a king of a country enticing another country, he asked. Son. By fate, your father with such principles happened to bear the weight of this Chola country. Paranthaka Karavarthi called your father and said, you must bear the burden of the kingdom while he was waiting for his death because of the many accidents that befell the kingdom and the death of the king. Your father agreed, not wanting to further hurt your dying father's feelings. The blessed Viranarayani Devi, who married your father before me, attained Shivpada before that. I never saw your father then. Therefore, your father was worried about what would become of the Chola Empire after your father's time. Fortunately at that time those who went to Elam in search of your little father's sons, found Sundara Chola on an island there. Parintaka Chakraborty had immense love for Sundara Chola. From the day he was a baby, he used to hold him in his lap and rock him and praise him. Many elders had said that the Chola clan was going to achieve greatness through Sundara Chola. Due to such reasons, your father has a great love for Sundara Chola. Therefore, when your father ascended the throne, he said that Sundara Chola should be crowned prince and that his descendants should rule the Chola country. Your father told me all these details. He was determined to carry out the dying wish of Emperor Parintaka. He thought that Sundara Chola and his descendants should not face any obstacle in attaining the title. Your father has no desire to rule a kingdom, there is no attachment to royal affairs. He is a holy man. His soul and Sada's Arvakalam were wandering in the lotus feet of Lord Nataraja. Therefore, he entrusted all the affairs of the kingdom to his younger brother Aranjaya and his son Sundara Chola. He was engaged in the handiwork of Lord Shiva. As I said earlier, he had no intention of getting married again. But I came alone to break his resolve. He fell in love with me and married me because he knew that I was also a devotee of Shiva. I am blessed to have attained him. I must have done penance to reach him in so many births. Blessed are you who have him as your father. There are very few sages in this world who are happy to see God. Lord Shiva came and gave vision to your father and took him away from this world, your father visited Lord Shiva as I see you now with my crippled eyes. You and I are obliged to fulfill the will of such a holy man. As such, he had no intention of remarrying. But I came alone to break his resolve. He fell in love with me and married me because he knew that I was also a devotee of Shiva. I am blessed to have attained him. I must have done penance to reach him in so many births. Blessed are you who have him as your father. There are very few sages in this world who are happy to see God. Lord Shiva came and gave vision to your father and took him away from this world. Your father visited Lord Shiva as I see you now with my crippled eyes. You and I are obliged to fulfill the will of such a holy man. As such, he had no intention of remarrying. But I came alone to break his resolve. He fell in love with me and married me because he knew that I was also a devotee of Shiva. I am blessed to have attained him. I must have done penance to reach him in so many births. Blessed are you who have him as your father. There are very few sages in this world who are happy to see God. 
Lord Shiva came and gave vision to your father and took him away from this world, your father visited Lord Shiva as I see you now with my crippled eyes. You and I are obliged to fulfill the will of such a holy man. But I came alone to break his resolve. He fell in love with me and married me because he knew that I was also a devotee of Shiva. I am blessed to have attained him. I must have done penance to reach him in so many births. Blessed are you who have him as your father. There are very few sages in this world who are happy to see God. Lord Shiva came and gave vision to your father and took him away from this world, your father visited Lord Shiva as I see you now with my crippled eyes. You and I are obliged to fulfill the will of such a holy man. But I came alone to break his resolve. He fell in love with me and married me because he knew that I was also a devotee of Shiva. I am blessed to have attained him. I must have done penance to reach him in so many births. Blessed are you who have him as your father. There are very few sages in this world who are happy to see God. Lord Shiva came and gave vision to your father and took him away from this world, your father visited Lord Shiva as I see you now with my crippled eyes. You and I are obliged to fulfill the will of such a holy man. I am blessed to have attained him. I must have done penance to reach him in so many births. Blessed are you who have him as your father. There are very few sages in this world who are happy to see God. Lord Shiva came and gave vision to your father and took him away from this world, your father visited Lord Shiva as I see you now with my crippled eyes. You and I are obliged to fulfill the will of such a holy man. I am blessed to have attained him. I must have done penance to reach him in so many births. Blessed are you who have him as your father. There are very few sages in this world who are happy to see God. Lord Shiva came and gave vision to your father and took him away from this world, your father visited Lord Shiva as I see you now with my crippled eyes. You and I are obliged to fulfill the will of such a holy man. As I see you now with my crippled eyes your father visited Lord Shiva. You and I are obliged to fulfill the will of such a holy man. As I see you now with my crippled eyes your father visited Lord Shiva. You and I are obliged to fulfill the will of such a holy man. When the mother stopped saying this, the body of the listening son was trembling. His heart was burning. How is that, mother? My father has told me nothing. What am I obliged? In what way? Said Madhurand Hagen. Having you by my side I am full of soul and body, on the other hand I was afraid of incurring your father's wrath. That great man was not angry with me. But he left me with the responsibility of fulfilling his promise. Son. I made a promise to your father that I would not attach you to this worldly life and raise you to become a devotee of Shiva. Until some time ago, I thought that I had fulfilled that promise. But, son of my life. O oh rich son of my eye. I have been hearing something for some days. Every time I hear such talk, my chest hurts. Won't you soothe the pain in my chest by assuring me that everything I hear is a lie? Mother Sempi Yan made of e begged. Mother. Your mysterious words hurt my heart too. What do you hear, what do you expect from me, what assurance do you ask of me? Madhurand Hagen hissed. Child. You seem to have lost the power to know what is in my heart. You say that I must publish it, well, I say. I hear that your mind has fallen from the river Ganges, a place of devotion to Shiva, into a muddy puddle. I hear that you aspire to ascend the throne of the Chola clan. That our enemies have corrupted your sacred soul in such a way. I know. If you say that what I have heard is not true, my mind will be at ease. Said the old woman. Madhurand Hagen stood up from the pedestal on which he had been sitting. Seeing his agitation, his mother woke up. None of my enemies have corrupted my mind. Are those who want to put me on the throne my enemies? Are those who have come forward to give their lives for me? Not a single day. Who is really my birth enemy? It is you who gave birth to me. Cried Madhurand Hagen. Out of rage he forgot his honor, forgetting that Chinapula Vetare had told her to change the mother's mind with kind words, he lashed out. They have made the mother the enemy of the son. 
I will never relinquish my rightful Chola throne. I will not let go even if you say so. I will not listen even if my father, who has attained Shivapada, comes back and tells me. This Chola kingdom is mine, this ancient throne is mine, I own the crown of jewels, which was worn so richly by charcoal, I will reach them. Here is the Rudraka garland that you gave me around my neck. I had worn it all these days for the honor of being a mother, this very moment I am throwing away this Rudraksha garland that made me a laughingstock and made the whole country and city laugh, you can keep it. This Chola empire is mine, this ancient throne is mine, I own the crown of jewels, which was worn so richly by charcoal, I will reach them. Here is the Rudraka garland that you gave me around my neck. I had worn it all these days for the honor of being a mother, this very moment I am throwing away this Rudraksha garland that made me a laughingstock and made the whole country and city laugh, you can keep it. This Chola kingdom is mine, this ancient throne is mine, I own the crown of jewels, which was worn so richly by charcoal, I will reach them. Here is the Rudraka garland that you gave me around my neck. I had worn it all these days for the honor of being a mother. This very moment I am throwing away this Rudraksha garland that made me a laughingstock and made the whole country and city laugh, you can keep it. Madhurandhagan was furious and tried to remove the Rudraksha garland from his neck in a hurry. Unable to take it off, he tried to saw it off, but apart from the neck being straight, the garland remained the same. Madhurandhagan is beautiful in appearance. It can be said that he is more handsome than the sons of Sundara Chola. A charming tinge of femininity shone on his face, which they lacked. His face, which had fit such a weed, was now contorted with anger and rage. Sembian Mathavi closed her eyes as she could not bear to see it. After he squealed and rested, she opened her eyes. Without the slightest change in the gentleness of his voice, he said, Son. Be still. Listen to my words, though I be a deceitful demon. She said. Madhurandhakan heard that voice and calmed down a bit. I'm listening, I'm not denying that I won't listen. He said. They have friends in neighboring countries too. Who are your companions? Whom will you trust to start a war with them? Son. You know that for some days there has been a cloud in the sky. It is a fact that the world has seen that if a comet appears in the sky, the life of the royal family is in danger. I am concerned that such an accident should not happen to you. Baby. Is it wrong for me to want my only son to be alive? Is that my betrayal of you? Is it wrong for me to want my only son to be alive? Is that my betrayal of you? Is it wrong for me to want my only son to be alive? Is that my betrayal of you? Madhurandha's anger subsided a little with these words. His heart softened. Mother. Forgive me. Could you have told them earlier that this was their concern? I would have solved their concern in a moment. I am no orphan without a mate. I have the most influential petty kings and nobles in the Chola Empire. The Palyavetareus are in my party. The Sambuvarayar of Kadampur is on my side. Their brothers are also on my side. My father-in-law Malavarayar is also in my party. And Nila Thangariar, Dumkyude Rajaliar, and Kundrathur Paranjizar are supporting me with full strength. They have sworn to support me. Son. I do not believe in the oaths they make. They once swore to be true to the Sundara Chola Emperor and his descendants. You can assume that they will be true to you. Don't you know that the Sanyam they have is very small? The Sanyam in the north is under the leadership of Adita Kari Kalan. Kajumbalar is under the leadership of Velar. Mother. The petty princes who support my party can bring 10,000 soldiers ahead at any time. Sanyam is one side. What about the people? Don't you know how much the people of Kolonato love Sundara Chola's sons? You saw it today. If Aromas Hivarman or Adita Karikala had come to this ancient city today, how would the people have gathered and welcomed you? The people of this town were once very kind to you too. People have started hating you ever since you got involved with the scumbags. Mother. I do not care at all about the adoration of the people. What is the adoration of the people? 
the people are to be ruled, to whom the people owe their devotion to whoever sits on the throne and rules. Son. Those who have taught you have not taught you even the basic principles of political justice. No king can rule without the admiration of the people. There is no virtue in ruling like that. While the old lady was saying this, a great commotion was heard at the palace gate. Screams, curses, angry voices, and questioning voices rose from thousands of human continents, heard like a terrible roar on the sea when a great wind blows. Son. Some great calamity is approaching the Chola Empire. This is the first sign of it. I will go outside the palace and find out what is the matter. Until then, stay here. Said the mother.